appreciate you being here. I apologize again, uh, again for the difficulties. You guys have seen this before. I won't, I won't bore you with a, uh, I won't bore you with a disclaimer. Uh, but the, tell you real quick, obviously you guys have been to the Trading Pub, but our goal is providing free education in all markets. Somebody asked earlier, I love getting that question, somebody asked earlier, is this going to be a sales pitch? And uh, the answer is absolutely not. Uh, so again, all our education is free. Basically all we ask of you guys if you're, if you're going to be here is uh, to be cool. You know, for some reason, you know, I'm talking about something that's completely boring to you. Uh, just, you know, don't be this rude guy right here, but be cool and uh, you can log out and enjoy the rest of your day. A uh, quick bio on me, I uh, learned about the markets actually when I was 16 years old, I placed my first trade in futures. Uh, that was the market I really learned to trade on. I've traded stocks, options, futures, Forex, and Nadex, and have really had the opportunity to learn from some wonderful traders. I uh, basically launched the trading pub in July of 2011, and then launched market deal in uh, 2013, so that's um, www.marketdeal.com. We have a lot of good free education up there. I'm just um, but have a lot of good free education up there. We do trade of the weeks that we'll post, and as a uh, lifelong Cubs fan, I've been conditioned for patience and accepting losses. Uh, Earl, actually, uh, Tom is my father and one of the people that I've learned to trade from. So. Next slide. Uh, real quick question for you. Which one of these represents how you feel about your trading? So again, which one of these represents how you feel about your trading? Number one or number two? Yeah, number three. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, you know, sometimes it, it kind of depends on the day. You know, sometimes you're having a that number one type of a day and some sometimes you look at it and say, man, this was really uh, a day that I just threw money away. Um, and that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you're on top of the world, sometimes you're not. Yeah, 1.5, and I would, I would say that as well. Uh, I can tell you that um, yesterday for me was a number one type of day, and today has been number two. I've thrown, thrown the money back. And so, uh, you know, have good days and bad days. But the key is really kind of thinking about, okay, how can I consistently move from this one over to number one, and how can I share, see Cheryl had a number one day? That's good, awesome day. You know, you have to think about how can I move from a more have a more consistent. And so then you start to think about okay, so that's a daily basis. I mean, everybody's going to have winning days. Everybody's going to have losing days. You have to look at it and say, okay, how how was my week? You know, was my week you know an awesome week or was my week a throw money away week? And hopefully you have more weeks that fall into the number one category then into the number two category. And then the third thing you think about is how is my month? So again, when you start to look at months, then obviously you want your months definitely to be awesome because everybody's going to have losing days. You'll have losing weeks, but you want to have uh, have more winning days than losing days. And yeah, kind of kind of funny there. But um, And then thinking about it from the year. So you got to kind of look at your trading. You look at it from the year, from the month, from the week, and the day. All right. So kind of analyze your trading in that way. And so today's topic that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about defined risk trading uh, in the markets. And this is uh, one of the ways that I trade. So primarily just to tell you a little bit about what I do and then I want to find out from you guys. Uh, primarily for most of my trading I swing trade. Uh, if I'm swing trading, I'm swing trading futures and futures options. If I'm intraday trading, I'm using Nadex, uh, which is defined risk trading, meaning you have a defined risk on every single trade. So again, that's extremely important to understand. Real quick, if you can, tell me, what do you guys trade primarily? Type in the market you trade, and then type in what uh, time frame you trade, whether you're intraday swing. So like if you're an intraday stock trader, type in intraday stock. But let me know what time frame you trade primarily. All right, good deal. So it's like we've got a good mix in here. Some FX traders, uh, some intraday Nadex. Uh, Hakeem trades intraday Nadex. Some stock options, swing trading, ETFs, intraday futures. Uh, trade the Russell, 
Forex swing trading daily four hour. Yeah, four. I like the four hour chart. It's a good chart to look at, especially in Forex. Okay. So real quick, what I'm going to do is talk about just a few thoughts on the market in general. I'm going to talk about some swing trading strategies and then how to use those uh, and three different strategies that you can use in the market. So first of all, uh, before I get to the kind of overall market, uh, what are some of the reasons we lose money in trading? Obviously, over trading. Uh, if you're not experienced, too much leverage. But the number one reason that I've found that people lose money in trading is that the losses are much bigger than their gains. So how many of you have fallen into that category? You know, where maybe you you know, had a good trade, you made 150 bucks, you had a bad trade, you lost 450 bucks, right? I think a lot of people in here would agree that uh, that happened. I know that I definitely have. And and honestly, yes, that's sometimes you you fall into each of those categories, too much leverage over trading, et cetera. But I think the main reason, if you were really to drill it down and said, what's the number one reason that people lose money, it's that fourth reason right there where your losses are much bigger than your gains. And so if you look at that, you have to say, okay, well, how can I change that? How can I move from having big losses and small gains? And, you know, like John said, taking a loser is harder than taking a winner. Well, that's part of the problem is a lot of times people get in a trade, you get up a little bit and take off the profit. But when it's going against you, you say, yeah, I'll see if it comes back. And that's how it turns into a big winner. Yeah, your ego gets involved. Exactly. So you guys are right on. I mean, it's easy to talk about. It's, it's very easy to talk about losing money in trading because it happens to everybody. But I think if you were to look back at your trading, probably the biggest reason uh, that traders have that keep them from being successful is losing more than they actually make when they're making money. And so what I want to want you guys to do is think about this like a quick exercise, okay? Take a look, and you don't have to do this right now, but look at your last 10 trades, regardless of what, you know, we have all kinds of traders in here, but look at your last 10 trades and look at how many of those trades are winning trades and how many are losing trades. And then look at the amount of the winning trades versus losing trades. And a very... Um, a very interesting thing that you'll hear some traders do, and this is kind of a warning sign. Yeah, and some do that due to a lack of trading plan, but um, how many of you, let me ask you, ask you this question. Um, if I said I, I can teach you a strategy to be right 90% of the time, how many of you would say sign me up? How many of you say absolutely I'll do it? If I said I'll teach you to be right 90% of the time. Okay. All right. Here's the deal. And this is, this is why people lose money. Okay. And David's got it. David has the right answer. And Ashraf, Ashraf Alam has the right answer. It says, depends on the risk reward ratio. Okay. That's the key is that a lot of times we focus on percentages and say, Hey, I want to be right 80% of the time or 90% of the time. However, what you really should focus on is say percentages don't matter. Okay. Whether you're right 30%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%. It doesn't matter. What matters is how much you make when you're right and how much you make when you're wrong. So don't think of your trading in percentages. Think of your trading in, when you look at 10 trades, what's the average gain and the average loss, and then look at the percentage. Because if you're making 100 bucks but you're losing 1,000, it doesn't matter if you're right 90% of the time. You're going to be losing money at the end of the day when you factor everything in. And so again, I want you guys to do this after the webinar. Take some time, and it'll be very beneficial to you. But look at your trades, the last 10 trades, and kind of do the math on it. Figure out what your average gain was, what your average loss was, and then figure out and say, okay, if my average gain is 200 bucks, my average loss is 300 bucks. How many times do I have to be right just to break even? And that's how you can you can figure that out. But again, it's very important to look at. So one of the reasons that I like swing trading is that basically when you look at a trade, the shorter time frame that you trade, the more important entry price is, okay? So like for instance, let's say that, um, let's, let's take a look, who's seen, seen the stock Tesla? Who, who's watched the stock Tesla? You guys know it's been pretty much on fire, literally, because their car caught on fire last week and the stock dropped, but, but you know, it's been almost straight up for the past several months, all right? Now, 
if I'm trading at intraday, yeah, I haven't had a bad day today. Typically, when the market gets weak, you'll, you'll see a lot of those momentum stocks have a, have a tough time. Well, if I told you two months ago, hey, I'm going to buy Tesla and hold it for a couple weeks, do you think I would have made money? Yes or no? Yes, right. I mean, pretty even even if I bought the high of the day one day, okay, even if I bought the high of the day because I was right on that move, that means I probably would have made money. So I might have bought the high of the day on a Tuesday, but I held it till Thursday and I was right on the overall move and made money, all right? And that's swing trading. Now, if I tell you, hey, I think Tesla's going up today, uh, but I buy it at the wrong time and then it goes down, then basically I lost money. So timing becomes much more important the shorter term you're trading. So when you trade with a little bit longer time frame, then you get a little bit more grace when it comes to picking your time. Um, yeah, the the car did not need to burn. The stock was already to go on the toilet. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it had gone up a ton. So, I mean, it was definitely due for a correction with the market being weak. So, it's kind of an interesting uh, interesting deal. But typically, um, typically to swing trade, you've got to risk a little bit more because you've got to stay in it through a bigger move. So, what I try to do is I look to trade less contracts, so less size, but be able to spread it out over a little bit longer time period. So, I'll take more risk, but I'll also have much more reward. And then I'll look at option strategies to help with overnight risk. And that's where Nadex comes in. So Nadex stands for North American Derivative Exchange, CFTC registered. And I'll tell you this real quick. This is very important. When you look at a binary option, and you guys probably have heard a lot about this. You see a lot online. You see ads for binary options. You see crazy things like account bonuses if you open an account at some places. There's a lot of offshore binary option shops. Those are shops kind of like with some Forex firms, and Forex has been cleaned up a good bit, but binary options right now, a lot of the offshore shops mean that you're actually trading against binary against the broker. So that means that when you buy it, they're selling it. It's like a casino. When you walk in a casino, you know, casinos are built because they win, right? Now, that's the disadvantage to a lot of binary options shops is that they're trading against you. Nadex, on the other hand, is an exchange. That means that they do not have a position. They're just facilitating orders between members. Right, Earl? All the, the, the offshore binary option shops are trading against you. Nadex is just an exchange, which means just like if you're trading on the CME or someone else, they're not on the other side of the trade. So again, if you think about it, if you're in a situation where your financial livelihood is the exact opposite of the person holding your money and trading, you have to think the odds are stacked pretty far against you. Okay, if you just sort of think about it, okay, kind of like when you walk in a casino, the casino doesn't want you to win. So if you're if you're trading at a brokerage that has the opposite position of you, then at the end of the day, they don't want you to win. So that's kind of setting yourself up in a tough situation. Now, that's what we like about Nadex is the fact that they're not a bucket shop. They're actually an exchange. They're regulated by the CFTC. Um, and so, again, that's important to understand. There's no membership fee to join the exchange. You can get started with as little as $100 in an account. The way that they work, there's no commission on trades. It's just an exchange fee of $0.90 cents per lot. All right. So basically, if you trade a 10 lot, that would be $9 per side, and the fee is capped against that. So again, the fee would be capped against that. Um, how would you know if the broker is against you? Whoever you're trading through, just ask them who's on the other side of the trade. Ask them if they're, you can ask them, say, are you dealing? basically, which means that they're the one taking your order. They're trading against your liquidity. But most of the, most of the um, binary option platforms offshore are uh, trading against you. So with Nadex, basically, once you, trade, uh, once you trade over 10 contracts, you're good to go. Yep, those who have a dealing desk. All right, so a binary option, and Chip talked a little bit about this, but it's basically a simple, simple short-term contract, intraday, daily, and weekly are the three time frames. So you can trade it intraday, you can trade it daily, and you can trade it weekly. Uh, the, the contract, it's 90 cents per contract is the exchange fee, uh, but it caps out at 10. So if I trade one contract, it costs me 90 cents exchange fee to get in, 90 cents to get out. If I trade two, it'd be $1.80 per contract. If I trade 10, it'd be $9, but if I trade 20, it's still only $9. The fee's capped at $9. Every trade has limited risk and it's fully collateralized, all right? What that means is when you put the money up, uh, when you put the trade up, the money is basically, for the risk side of the trade, is held out of your account. 
and that means that the person on the other side of the trade, whoever makes money, the money's immediately deposited once you're out of that trade. So if I'm in a binary option, that binary option expires at 3 o'clock. As soon as it expires within about one minute, that money's back in my account and I can use it again or, or close out or transfer out. There's no like overnight processing or anything like that. So basically a binary option is a yes or no proposition. All right, it's pretty straightforward. So for, for example, let's say, what, I know we have some, some uh, futures traders in here. What, what, does anybody trade the E-mini S&P? Have any E-mini S&P traders in here? Okay, all right, so we've got several S&P traders. All right, let, so here's an example. Right now the S&P is around 16, 1648. All right, so I'm going to type this in the uh, chat area, 1648. All right. A binary option would be, let's say, um, basically the S&P 500, which is the abbreviation for the E-mini S&P on Nadex, is over 1650. All right. So if we see see a binary option that expires at uh, 5:30 Eastern, all right, which would be about 20 minutes. So basically, what that's going to show us is that for this option contract to expire over 1650 by 530 Eastern. So basically the way that this works would be if we end up above 1650, that option is worth $100. If we end up below 1650, that option is worth zero. All right? Does that make sense to everybody? So it trades from zero to 100. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Can be traded long or short. So, for instance, we've got Brian in here, and we've got James in here, all right? Let's say that Brian, yeah, that's the strike price. Let's say that Brian says, hey, the s and is going to go up. I'm going to buy this binary option contract, and let's say that the binary option is at 40, okay? So, let's say it's priced at 40, and Brian buys it from, let's say, from Elena at 40, all right? So, that means that Brian is long at 40. Okay, Elena is short at 40. Does that make sense to everybody? So Brian bought it, Elena sold it. Everybody follow me? Just type in a quick yes. All right. Okay, and we know that, and this is an important thing, we understand that women are typically smarter than men. All right, isn't that right? I think Elena would agree with that. So basically, it means that Elena is going to be right on this trade. So she is going to be right on this trade, which means that all the guys in the room that sided with Brian are going to lose money. So the S&P, so let's say that the ES at expiration is a, yeah, that's right, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, let's say the S&P at expiration is at 1646, all right? Let's say the S&P at expiration is 1646, all right? That means that the option would be below the strike which means it would be at zero, all right? So basically, Brian and all the guys in the room said, hey, we're going to buy this at 40 and think it'll go up. Elena, all the ladies in the room said, we're going to short this at 40 and think it's going to go down. So let's look at what we, how much each person lost. So Brian paid 40, paid $40. It went to zero, so he lost. $40. And I thought Brian was going to make money, so I did that too, so I lost money too. Now, Elena thought it was going to go down to go to zero, so she shorted at 40. It went to zero, so she made $40, right? Okay? So just like buying and selling, okay? She shorted at 40. It went to zero, so she made $40, right? Yep, exactly. So she made money. Brian lost money. All right, and yes, that's a good question Peter asked. Peter said, well, okay, so now let's throw Peter in the mix, all right? So Peter also buys it at 40. He's with Brian, all right? So um, he's, he's with Brian that he says, basically, um, okay, I'm going to buy it at 42, okay? So Peter buys at 40. Dennis, remember, he bought it, he, Brian bought at 40. So if he bought at 40, it went to zero, right? So if he bought at 40, it went to zero, so he lost 40, not 60. If, if it had gone up, if it had gone to 100, then Brian could have made 60 
and Elena would have lost 60, but because it went down, he paid 40, right? So, all right, so let's say Peter buys it at 40, and let's say that right after Peter buys it, the market trades up, and the binary is now at 55, all right? So we're in the trade, Brian's in the trade long at 40, Peter's in the trade long at 40, Elena's in the trade short at 40. It trades up to 60, or it trades up to 55, right? It trades up to 55, and Peter says, you know what? I'm going to get out of this trade. I don't like it anymore, or you know, I'm happy making $15. So Peter sells it at 55. He gets out. He takes his $15, and he's out. You can trade in and out of this at any time. Brian and Elaine in the example held to zero. Okay, so again, it's um, held to held to zero. So that's an example, but it's one dollar per tick. All right, here's the rules that I use for binary option trading. All right, step number one. I think this is important. I think that this is important to understand. Uh, basically, number one is that you're not the smartest person in the room. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like a stock option. So think of it like a stock. It's it, it's like trading an option but it just gives you a max gain and max loss. So that's the difference, is that when you, when you go long, the most you can make is wherever you bought it between where you bought it and 100. When you go short, the most you can make is whatever you sold it for and zero. All right? And your max loss is the other side. So basically, yeah, it's, it's just a defined risk option. So step number one, I think everybody can probably agree to this. Uh, I don't know, some of you guys might be pretty smart in here, so you, you might not fall into step number one category. But I say that I'm not the smartest person in the world. Step number two, uh, you want to determine overall market direction. It's very important. Uh, and don't look at a binary option and just say, oh, there's some premium there. I can pick up a little bit. So I'm going to take this trade just for premium stake. You know, look at it and, and have a reason for getting into the trade. Um, yeah, you, Elena, you can sell a, a part of the contract to minimize loss. So you can sell a part of it. No, the, all the binaries uh, on Nadex are 0 to 100. So basically what you would do is you would look to trade more than one contract if you wanted to make more money. Um, when I'm bullish, I look for a binary that's trading between 60 and 80 in price. If I'm bearish, I look to sell at 25 and 40. So let's think about this. Look at a binary as a probability, okay? So if the strike price, if the strike price is 1650. All right, if the strike price is 1650 and the current price is 1647, all right, then that means we're below the strike price, right? Does that make sense? So if the strike price is 1650, the current price is 1647, we're below the strike price. So if I buy the contract, that means the ES has to rally 3 points for me to make money. Does that make sense to everyone? So if I buy that contract, the S&P will have to rally three points, okay? If I short the contract, I make money if the ES drops, if the ES stays the same, or if it rallies 2.75 points or less, all right? Does that make sense? So again, if I buy the contract, it means it has to rally three points. So would you say, in that situation, would the odds be in the favor of the person who is short or the person who's long? And think about if you're short, you have a little bit of leeway there, right? Does that make sense to everyone? Right, the person that's short. So if you look at a risk-reward basis, is the reward going to be greater for the person that's short or the person that's long? Whoever has more risk, right, the long person, whoever has more risk is going to have to take, is going to have to be paid more reward. So the way that that binary would be priced, that binary would probably be priced around $35, okay? And so you look at that and you say, this is like a probability. So you'd say, okay, that's a 35% chance it gets to the strike, all right? So... If I think the market's going to go down, what I typically try to do, instead of looking at it and saying, hey, I'm going to try to hit a home run and you know buy a binary. So a home run trade would be buy a binary at 10 bucks and have a profit of $90 if it hits. That's the lotto trade. Okay, That's the lotto trade. Um, 
and you can look at that and say that's probably not going to hit a lot. It's kind of like buying a far out of the money option if you trade stock options and just saying, hey, you know, I'm going to Tesla's. I'm going to look at Tesla. I think Tesla's going to be the next Google. I'm going to go buy the 350 call on Tesla for 10 cents, right? Yeah, because 90% odds are against it, right? So what I'll do is I'll try to put myself in a position where I give up a little bit of gain but have the odds in my favor because I don't want to have to be dead right on timing. I want to have a little bit of leeway in it, okay? I want to have a little bit of leeway as far as timing goes. So what I would look to do if it's trading around 30 to 35, I'd look to short that contract if I felt like the market was going to go down. So again, step number one, I know I can be wrong. Step number two, I'm looking at the market. I think, okay, I think the market can go down. Step number three, I'm going to go find a binary to sell around 25 to 40, right? Yeah, it's in the money. I look to be in the money because I want to have a little bit of leeway. All right, now here's another trick with binaries. If the market trades up to 1650, all right, if the market trades right at 1650, the strike is 1650, then what do you think the probability is that it's going to close higher or lower? If we're trading right at the strike price, what would you say the probability would be? Yep, 50, right? You guys got, you guys are catching on to this. It'd be 50-50, all right? So I know basically if I short this binary, so short this binary at 35 when we are trading 1647, I know if the S&P rallies three points that that binary will move from $35 to $50, okay? So if it trades to 1650 and I say, hey, maybe I wasn't right, the market's starting to turn, it's rallied three points, you know, I can get out of this trade, then I will look to get out and take a loss of $15 per contract. Does that make sense to everyone? So basically, I want to trade in the direction I think the market's going to go, but I want to give myself a little bit of an edge, and then I'll use that strike price if it trades to 50. So what I don't want to do, do not want to do, is short something at 35, all right? Um, short something at 35 and let it go all the way to 100, all right? That's where I get into that issue. Remember what we talked about? What was the number one reason traders lose money that we talked about earlier? Okay, it was losing more money than you make, right? Taking on t too much risk and too little reward. So I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm losing twice as much as I make, right? So again, I'll use that 50 level kind of as the key to do that. So here's an example. Um, this is just an example of what the binary option contract looks at. Um, and you can see here that this market basically sees 7650 by 7950. And so the way this works, you just put your buy, if you want to buy it or sell it, and then the price right there. And the way this works, you know, somebody asked the question, can you trade in and out of it? This is a chart of a binary. You see just how it trades in here. Basically, it can trade all the way 30 to 70 to 30 to 70. So it can be a really good trading vehicle around there. Um, yeah, exactly, Peter. And that's a good, good point. He, he talked about that, and we'll talk about some examples. So if the price is near an expected resistance point, your strategy would be to trade for a reversal. So like, let's say that I'm looking at this, this market right here, okay? Here's an example. Let's say I'm looking at this market that's trading at 1791, and you can, it's, it's on gold, but you can just look at the prices for examples, okay? So let's say that we're trading at 1791, and I think, I say, hey, I think 1790 is really good support, right? If I think 1790 is really good support, I think gold's gonna go higher, um, I'll buy this around $35, all right? This would be a binary. I need this to get back above $17.94, and I think that gold's about to pop. Well, I can take this trade. My max loss would be $35. My max profit would be $65. So basically, you look at the $100, and you, if you pay $35, the most you can make is, is, 35, is $65. Um, Jack, the thing to think about, basically, uh, if you think about a five-point spread, um, so you have a $5 spread, and the E-mini, just, just to kind of think about, the E-mini, each point spread is $12.50. So again, each point spread would be $12.50. Um, and the spreads are a little bit tighter now than they were back when this was taken also. But you, could, you get a better idea if you pull up a demo account, uh, and I'll, I'll give you that link, but you can see the spreads live. When it's 
active trading session, uh, typically the spreads are better. Uh, you can use limit orders that doesn't accept stops. So again, somebody asked the question, what happens if you can't really watch it? Uh, you don't want to put on a trade that's like right near the strike price and just walk away. You know, because if if it, if you're looking at it and you say, hey, I'm you know going to put the S and P's at 16.48. I'm going to put the 16.50 binary on. I'm not going to do that and then you know come back three hours later because the S and P could very easily move three points, right? Could very easily move three points. So a high probability, high a high probability low reward trade would be here as you see an example. Um, this is kind of that example I talked about earlier. This is like a credit trade. All right. How many people in here have done a credit spread before? Just type in a yes. How many people, yes or no? How many people have done credit spreads? All right. And what's the what's the point of a credit spread? It's basically it's basically you have defined risk on the trade. The um, you keep the credit, right? So, so you do a high probability trade setup and collect the premium. Okay, yeah. So basically, like an example here is that you see gold for this trade to work. Gold's at 17.91. Yeah, you take the time decay. Time decay. So you see gold here at 17.91.70. This option example has for gold to be above 17.84. So it's seven points in the money. All right. So this would be seven points in the money, and basically you have about two hours on the trade. So an example here would be if you bought this at $89, all right? So this is one of those, it's a high probability trade, but it has a low reward. And we'll talk about risk on this. This is where people get in trouble on credit spreads, is basically they'll take this trade. This trade has about an 89% chance of success. They'll take this trade, and it'll work out basically you'll make $11. So you look at that and you say, well, you only make $11. Well, the cool thing with credit spreads, I'm going to talk about the good and the bad. The cool thing is you make $11 off $89 of risk. All right. So when you start looking at returns, it can get kind of crazy. So you look at that and you say, okay, so I made $11. I put up $89 to do it. So I made 12% on my risk. So 12% return on risk, which is a very cool thing, a very powerful thing. Here's where you get in trouble is let's say that um, you take this contract, you buy it at 89, all right, and then let's say that gold starts to drop, gold hits the, gets to the 50 area, and you say, oh, I'm going to stick with it, I'm not going to get out, and then gold keeps dropping and keeps dropping. Now all of a sudden it's at zero, and you lose 89, all right, so it goes to zero. So now you lost $89, right? Um, yeah, the union dock lender rates, there you go, 12% a day. So, well, it takes a lot of $11 winners to make back that $89. So anytime you do a high probability, low reward strategy, and I'm not saying this is a bad strategy, this is actually something I'll do from time to time, but you have to watch risk on it and avoid a full loss, all right? So when it gets to that, that's where I use that $50, $50 rule. If it trades all the way down to $17.84 or gets to that $50, I'll get out and take you know the $30 to $40 loss instead of waiting around to take a full $90 loss. So again, that's the high probability. Yeah, so for this to be correct, for this to be correct, it would have to be greater than $17.84. So basically, I've got an eight-point built-in spread, basically, seven-point spread for, for that trade to be right. So this would be a strategy where I said, hey, I'm actually bullish on gold. I think gold's going to look go up, and I'm going to buy this and use the time decay to my advantage. All right, and basically, in two or three hours, I can pocket about 12% of a return on risk. Um, yeah, you can't use a stop. So that's the thing is is you have to watch it. There's not a stop. So yeah, and, and Elena said like usually five to 20%, and then then cut it on those. All right. So first strategy, the lower probability would be we're trading at 1791 saying hey I think gold will go up above 1794 that's one where you buy it at 35 and you have a profit of 65 so almost a 2 to 1 payout um, the other strategy is you have about a 7 point buffer in there so gold could drop a little bit it could go up it could stay the same you still make money so those are the two different strategies notice the risk and reward so this one you take more risk that you've got to be right which means that Gold has to go up a couple points for you to make money. It has to be above 1794, but you're rewarded for doing that. You make 
$65. This strategy, you give yourself a lot more leeway, but you only get paid $11. So you're making 12% there instead of doubling your money. So again, it's the risk and reward. All right. The other type of contract is the bull spread. And this is really the cool thing. You know, some of you guys say, well, I don't necessarily want to do the binary, the all or none type thing. Uh, you know, the bull spread, I think every trader, when you start out in futures or forex, you should start out with a bull spread because it's a short-term contract and everything is limited. Every the limit, the profit's limited and the risk is limited on the trade, and you can trade it down to one dollar a tick. Uh, Jody, thank you for coming. We'll get, we definitely will get your recording. Hope that you've enjoyed it so far. So the cool thing with this is basically it's like trading. For those of you that have traded E minis before, it's like trading a uh, mini of the mini. So you can trade a uh, Nadex spread where it's a dollar a tick instead of the E mini that's twelve fifty a tick. It's a great tool to learn with. And then obviously if you start to do well, you can always increase it. So a couple of tips real quick for spread trading before we wrap things up. With more volatile markets, I want to try to buy near the floor or sell near the ceiling to minimize risk. So for example, let's think about how many people in here trade crude oil? How many people trade crude oil? Okay, we've got a couple people. Okay, so crude oil is trading right around like 103.50. All right. Well, crude oil is a crazy market. I mean, it's a crazy market. Okay, uh, it can move a lot. It's a big contract. Each dollar on crude oil is a thousand dollars. Okay, so if I buy at 103.50 and it drops to 102.50, I would lose one thousand dollars per contract on the CL. All right, does that make sense to everyone? It's a thousand dollars. So one of the cool things with spreads is let's say, how, how many of you have had this happen to you where you buy at 103.50, you put a stop at 103.10, CL drops to 103.05, and then rallies to 104.50. How many have been in a situation like that? It could be crude, could be any market. Basically, you buy it, it goes right to your stop, it hits you, and then it ended up being a great trade. I think everybody can say that. The cool thing with a spread is the defined risk amount sort of functions as a, like a stop in the sense that your risk is capped, but you're still in the trade if it comes back, right? Yeah, and, and, and like uh, as Hathi just said, it happens a lot with futures. So what can happen is you could buy the spread. So let's say that there's a Nadex spread on crude at 103.00. 50 to 104.50, all right? And crude at the time is trading 103.60, all right? So crude at the time is trading 103.60. You think crude's going to go up. We think the crude might trade up to 104. We can buy that spread at 10, let's say that we have to pay up a little bit, so we pay at 103.62, all right? The floor is 103.50. All right, the floor is 103.50, which means the most we can lose is 12 cents. All right, the most we can gain is 88 cents, up to the 104.50. So if crude oil drops, let's say that news, I have uh, an EIA announcement which comes out every Wednesday, you know, at 10:30 Eastern. If I have an EIA announcement coming out, I know crude's about to get real volatile. I could buy that spread contract, basically risk 12 cents, and be long crude oil for the next hour or two hours of the day, right? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, it's a very good risk to reward. So basically, it gives me limited downside, but it gives me um, limited upside, but the risk reward is very good. So yeah, on Bob Biggs, on crude futures, it's $1,000 a point, um, and you can, you can size your Nadex down to a tenth of that or you'd trade 10 contracts, which would be the equivalent. Uh, yes, you can trade the European markets very early in the morning, Greg. So here's an example looking back at gold on a spread that you see here, basically. Let's say that you're looking at shorting gold there at 1791. To do that trade in futures, basically you've got to put up you know, probably about $15,000. On Nadex, yes, Cheryl, we are recording for you. Um, on Nadex that you see here, notice the spread, 1750. Do you see the mouse? 1750 to 1800, right there. Does everybody see that? 
So if I short it at 1790.2, the most I can lose on this is up to 1800. All right. So the most I can lose is up to 1800. So if I did five contracts, all right, the max loss would be $490. The max gain would be 2000. So again, it's a way of using kind of like a built-in stop. That basically, if gold, so let's say that I take this trade short here and I take it short here and I put a stop at 1800 here and I've got the ceiling at 1800 here. If gold were to trade up to 1802, I'm stopped out of futures and I take the loss, right? But then if it drops back down, I've stopped out and I'm out of that trade, I'm still in my Nadex trade. That's the real advantage of spreads, is that basically you don't have to worry about being stopped out because your risk is maxed at the ceiling or the floor. But if it comes back down, you can still make, make money on that trade, so you're not taken out of that trade, which happens a lot you know, when you're just off on timing and get stopped out. So a, a quick recap of the strategies. Basically, uh, we talked about the credit strategies on daily binary contracts. Um, and looking at that 89, you know, if you're buying at 89, you know, trying to make the 12% return on risk. But we talked about the key importance of maximizing that trade. No, on a spread, Z, on a spread, this is cash settled. So it, this a spread's different from a binary. So if I sell this at 1790.2 and at expiration it's at 1790.2, then I break even on the trade. This isn't one of those 0 to 100 trades. This is just like trading the contract with it capped. So it's two different kinds of contracts, if that makes sense. The spread strategies, we talked about buying support, you know, like the crude oil example where you could buy it at 103.62 if the floor is 103.50. So what you want to do is look at your support and resistance numbers, and somebody typed this in earlier and said, oh, so I just need to look at support and resistance and then look for the opportunity. You look at your support and resistance numbers and try to buy near support or sell near resistance with the spread. So if I'm looking at crude oil and I think that there's resistance at 1800, then I'll look to sell this spread because I know that I can take a small amount of risk and have a larger amount of gain. Uh, Jim C asked, please be more precisely how you qualify overall market direction, trend or counter trend uh, for the intraday move, the day, the week. Um, Jim, a couple of things, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it. What I'll typically do is use key numbers in the market. Um, it's kind of pivot areas. And so it's simple, like I, I have, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. Um, Okay, let's see if I can get this. Um, just pull up a, let's see. Give me just one second. Okay. All right, I don't know if this is gonna work real quick. See if you guys can see this. Okay. All right, this is a chart, a chart of the euro. And this is just how I do it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it to determine that, and that's probably another class. But typically what I'll do is I'll look at a daily chart. All right. So I'll take a look at the euro, and I'll look at this daily chart and try to see the overall trend that it's in. And there's a couple of major markets that I look at. I'll look at the euro. I'll look at the S&P. I'll look at the bonds, I'll look at crude oil, I'll look at gold, and those are kind of the major things that I'll take a look at the overall, all right? So basically, I'll take a look at these and say, okay, what's the overall trend of the market? And typically, if I see the S&P going up, that's bullish for the euro as well. Um, but I would look at this and I'd say, okay, the overall trend is up. I've got a lot of support at the 135 area right here, and this is just a very simplified version. I'll go back here and say, okay, this high was at 135.80. I've got another high here, 135.73. I've got another high here, 135.80. And so basically looking at this part of the chart, I'll say obviously 135.80 is a key area on the euro. Okay, it was a big resistance area that we then broke through. All right, so see how it was resistance. You see the resistance here. Then we were able to break through it, and now we've traded above it. All right, we came back down, and we've gotten back above it. So what I would look at here is I'd say, okay, if I'm trading the euro intraday tomorrow, I'll look at 135.80 as a key pivot. So if we're trading above 135.80, 
then I'll look to use that as an area and say, okay, I'll take bullish positions above 135.80. I'll take bearish positions below 135.80. Does that make sense? That's just kind of a quick overview of how I'll try to frame the market. Um, again, it's not any cool lines, any cool indicators. You can do this with any daily chart. And I think it'll help you look at the daily chart and think about those key areas and then trade off those key areas. And then you can break it down. You can switch to a 30-minute chart and start looking at those key pivot areas. Yeah, those key pivot areas during the day as well. So that's kind of a quick, um, a quick overview of, of what I try to do. And then we talked about spread strategies. You know, you can also take the other side. Um, I think they're looking at adding bonds, see? Um, but I think, I think they are looking at adding bonds. Uh, taking spread strategies where you're giving up some of the, you're taking on more risk but giving up reward, but you're getting more time decay in it. And so again, that's another thing that um, you can look at. Uh, yeah, Jack, I'll, I'll be happy to go through that. Um, real quick, I'm going to go through just, just one or two more strategies. Here's an example of a credit strategy where basically, um, basically you look at a trade and say, okay, you see, if you see crude oil in a range, basically if you see a market in a range, you can trade both sides of it. So it's kind of like putting an iron condor on. So you do the credit trade above it, which would be above resistance, and then you do the credit trade above support. So again, basically there you bring in $19, you bring in $10, so you bring in a total of $30 uh, with $70 worth of risk that it'll stay in a range. So that's a strategy for a tight market. And you see an example of the settlement here. This is what happens as soon as you get out of a trade, basically. They'll say your position settled above $92, the payout was 100 all right, so um, we talked about this again. Remember how I talked about on credit trades? You watch that 50 area closely. Um, basically, here's one where you see we shorted it here. It traded almost up to the 40 area, almost up to 50, went to like 45, and then came back down and ended up expiring worthless. So this was a trade we almost got stopped out on, all right? Um, and yeah, the question on the brokers, like you said, a lot of, and be very careful, I've had several people email me and say, hey, I put money in this offshore account, you know, in Cyprus, or not to talk bad about a particular place, but a lot of them happen to be in Cyprus. Uh, they say, hey, I put money in this big account, and now I can't get out of the trade. Um, and that, that does tend to happen sometimes with offshore brokers. That's why we actually recommend Nadex, um, and you can open an account, and I'll put the link in, let's see, I think we had the, um, here's the demo account link, but I recommend, give it a, give the demo account a try, you can look at some, you know, some of you guys had questions on spreads, you can see those tomorrow, and if you can, if you open a demo account, if you, it's going to set you up for two weeks, yeah, that'll be the paper trade, it'll set you up for two weeks, if you send an email, once you open your demo account, you can, if you, if you open a live account, just put a hundred bucks in there just to fund it, if you send an email to dan.cook at nadex.com and let him know you were with the trading pub, and I'll type this in, and would like an extended demo, he can help get it set up for a full year where basically you can trade for a year. Like I said, Nadex is an exchange. They're not trading against you. It's actually in their best interest for you to make money because if you make money, you'll continue to trade. They make their money on exchange fees. So obviously, you know, if you go in and lose a bunch of money and close your account, they no longer make money. So they're in this so that they can make exchange fees. And again, that's very important uh, that that you succeed so that you continue to trade with them. So um, again, yeah, like Lawrence said, Dan's very helpful. Uh, they're great people to work with. I think that um, you guys will enjoy it. And I'll put this link in too. All the stuff at the Trading Pub is free. Um, and we put together this free library for you if you want to put your information in there. Uh, Matt, I don't have that. I'd have to ask Chip. Uh, Chip would have the numbers on volume, or Dan would as well, that you can send him an email. But here's the uh, free video library. And this has a lot of videos and some other stuff. Um, uh, Z, I have a real account. Why don't... Um, yeah, we are going to do another Nadex competition. 
we'll probably do that sometime in November, so be on the lookout for that. And two, if you get our free video series, we limit the competitions typically to about 200 traders. And so if you put your information in there, we'll let you know first about the contest since you've already expressed an interest in Nadex. So if you uh, want to get on the early list for Nadex competition, go here. All right. And you also get the free videos for that. But we'll do, we'll do another one. We'll have a good, cool grand prize. The, the competitions are free. So it's free to enter, um, and there's typically a pretty good cash. Last time the cash prize was 2,500 bucks to the winner. So, all right, everyone, we will definitely have Colin back soon. Um, I apologize for the tech issues. I hope that I was able to teach you a little bit um, in that. I hope that I was able to teach you a little bit and that you were able to uh, learn something that you uh, maybe enjoyed today's presentation. Um, I appreciate you guys sticking with us. You guys are very cool. Yeah, I hope you hope hopefully gave you something to think about. And again, I really appreciate you guys being being so cool with us. I know we have technology issues from time to time, but that's just part of the game. But we'll get a recording out to you, uh, and look forward to seeing you at our next event. Yeah, Laurel, we recorded it. I'll send the recording out to you probably tomorrow. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great afternoon.